So we have an absolutely special video for you today. This 5009 American Flyer set, 1950. It's a uh, 342 DC uh, nickel plate road 080 switcher set. And except for someone opening it up once and uh, doing a quick inventory on it, like this and looking at it and maybe taking a picture it is brand new just like it was sent from the factory let's take a look so except for someone uh, slicing it open and letting the gilbert factory air out it's basically a brand new set never been run it's uh there's your 5009 somebody wrote dc switcher set on there here's the side of the box Backside, nothing on there, of course. And then right over here from the AC Gilbert Company, New Haven, 6, Connecticut. So let's spin it around and let's see what we got in here. So opening it up, you can see some glue, like on these little spots right here. And uh, it looks like it was been pried up. And then when it was first opened, probably by my uncle, we have a picture of the interior of what it originally looked like inside. So we can rebuild it. But for now, let's take a look at the contents. So this is how these sets would have come from the factory. They had a piece of this brown tissue paper that covered up the very top around the box. So that's an original piece of paper that we had right there. I'm going to set that aside over here and here is what it looks like in there so I am going to not run this one obviously um, but we're going to go ahead and open these and we're going to take a look to see exactly how they pack these up for people and then we'll give a little historical um, use on the 50 or 9. so the, the first thing we notice is there's four sections of straight track and all they would ever do they never the boxes came with 12 you know pieces in there but these sets they were always short they had two or none or in this case four so they would just lay the straight track right on top of everything else in the box this one um, has obviously as i said been opened at one time but they put the original smoke cartridge that it came with and they put it in a baggie to keep it kind of fresh so we'll set that one aside there's the original instruction guide the original unopened with a rusty staple track trip for the power unit for the terminal We'll just start going through the rest of it and see how we do. So as we look through the box, the first thing you'll know is how perfectly it all fits together. So each of these boxes, you know, had their own bin number, each style, and they knew exactly what trains to put in each box. So all these American Flyer sets had their own individual box. And in this case, this was bin 1262. So whoever was putting together the 50 uh, 54s, or the, excuse me, the 5009s, knew which box to grab and then how to put everything inside. So, as uh, let me pull that back and go there. Um, and you'll notice how perfectly everything fits. Locomotive, car, track, operating car, and then I think this is just a spacer. The uh, automatic uncoupler. And then we have in between as kind of a filler, you know, a brand new box of track trips. So we're gonna set this over to the side. And uh, actually, I'm just gonna leave that right in there. And we'll see if we can do this in place. So the first thing we'll take a look at, of course, is the locomotive. So we're gonna reach in here and we're gonna pull this out. And I'm gonna close up the box. So I have an operating space on top. 
And the first thing you'll notice is it came with the cardboard tube, 342 DC switcher loco and tender with choo-choo and smoke, used with Gilbert direct current rectifier or rectiformer only. So this is a DC engine. And what you'll notice how they taped it up. So this one, you can see somebody took an, a, like a razor knife and they split the tape. Otherwise it would have been completely original. So as we open it up, I'm gonna set this down and we're just gonna barely open it up and we're gonna take a look at what this looked like inside. So here's our 342 DC. I'm gonna spin this around. <laughs> I already lost a, a cushion piece on the other side. So I'm gonna rescue that and I'll be right back. So I rescued our little piece <laughs> from the floor, but that went in on the end, as well as another piece over on this side. So if you take a look, here's what it looks like in there. So we have a, looks like we have a cardboard sleeve that covers up with a notch cut out so it doesn't damage the uh, drive gear inside. The actual rear truck is bent over to the side and it's propped up against the uh, end piece over here so that it doesn't slide within the unit and won't break that coupler when it's in there. We've got our original inspector's voucher that they would put in these, October 17th, 1950. We have the warning, do not attempt to revolve wheels. This locomotive is equipped with worm drive and the wheels will not revolve unless under power. This is a form, they had numbers on everything. So this is an M2217. In this one, there says to be operated on 15 volt max direct current only cannot be used on alternating current number 14 electronic rectiformer or 15 directronic rectifier recommended for operation. And this is an M2762. I'm gonna put these right back where I found them, right underneath there and tuck that back in. And then we have our operating instructions for the permanent magnet locomotive. And if we open up the slide box there, there's our brand new 342 DC locomotive. I'm not gonna pull this out of here. All I wanna show you now that you might notice is there's a block of wood in here. You see this? So in this case, it's just a square block of wood that fit in between the tender and the locomotive. And what that would do is keep it, like if you've ever seen locomotives at train shows and things, a lot of times you'll see the little uh, support arm, it'll be bent, attachment points will be broken. And that's because when they get shipped, they get thrown on their end and these two units crunch together. So to cure that from the factory, they put different sized little pieces of wood down in between the locomotive and the tender so that it wouldn't crunch together. But isn't that a beautiful little thing to see? But I wanted you to see how they shipped them from the factory. So now I'm gonna put this back and it's gonna go right back in the box where it was. So, well, we'll just take a look at the basic stuff first. If you look at this, this is just a spacer, cardboard spacer. That's a folded piece right there. And it just fits down on the end of the locomotive right there to keep it in place from sliding back and forth. So we'll just work our way across. This is, looks like this one is actually, they opened it and they kind of did a little rip on the the end right here, but that's fixable with a little piece of tape. And if we look on the end, this is the 646 powered floodlight car. So let's open it up. Since this end's already open, we'll take it. And what I love about this is this is how they were sent from the factory. So there's the box, but inside there's a piece of this brown tissue paper. And when you unwrap it, this is how they 
they would wrap up these cars. The inspector certificate was put in here October 25th, 1950. And I'll leave that right there. And what all they would do on these later versions, let me see if I can get the, oh, they double wrap this one. Let me see if I can get this open for you. Do that. So on this particular one, this is a green floodlight car with the green plastic, dark green plastic. They would use these wooden, or excuse me, cardboard tubes to protect the couplers. And they would go inside and one would go on each side. So this actual car it is basically a brand new um, Erie floodlight car, never been run, with a dark green plastic. So, beautiful car, but I wanted you to see this and how it was all put together. And I just noticed, even though they wrapped it up pretty well, and there's still one of the, the uh, brake wheel came off of here. So I'm gonna put that back in. So, just lightly, it should be reset, and then let's wrap it up and put it back. So the next item in the box is the track. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Basically a brand new box of 12 sections of curve track. And it takes 12 sections to make a full circle. And so this, in addition to our four sections of straight track, make that Make an oval, and we can see our brand new box. And what you notice is on the ends right here, I don't know if you can see that or not, and then down on this end as well, there's a cardboard piece that reinforces the insides to keep the, the uh, ends of the track and the, the attachment uh, pins from going through the side. So we'll close that up. Right back in there. Uh, well, you notice while I have it off, you notice we get a uh, we get a bunch of track locks. Number the 60, 693 track locks, still stapled together. And back over here, it's basically a brand new uncoupler. Almost every set came with an uncoupler, and we're just going to open one side of this just to take a peek. So you can look in there. And you can see the uncoupler with the wires. And we're gonna close this up. And from the other side, we'll open that up. You get your control button. And in 1950, it was the new style button with the uncoupler. And this happens to be a yellow version. Back in there. So our next car in the box is going to be our operating car. And so this is one of our 715 autom automatic unloading cars. This one has been taped up, but they did open the end. It's been Cut with a knife. I'm going to open this one up and we are going to take a look. This should be all authentic and so give me a second I'm going to make this a little easier to unload and look at and then uh, we'll take a look. Okay we're going to open up our operating auto unloading car for 1950. So we have Robert Air Company Incorporated, box maker out of Portland, Connecticut is who made this box. It's under bin 748. But if we look in the end, it's a car wrapped up in a nice cardboard wrapper with some tissue paper around it. So let's just pull it out and take a look. I'm going to set this box aside. Actually, there's something else in here. So there's an additional piece of tape that they had 
put in there or just cardboard wrapping that goes around it and someone had cut that. So that actually would go around the car in this fashion. So we're gonna remove that since it's already removed and we will unwrap the car. So this is how you would have got it on Christmas morning in 1950 for Christmas. So we got our control button. We got our cushion between the control button and the car. Here's our instructions on how to operate it. October 3rd, 1950. This is our inspector certificate. And then in this case, we've got the silver and red car with the unloading. And it looks like this particular car, you can turn the, um, the link couplers underneath. So they didn't have to put the cardboard tubes or secure it anyways, just this little piece of paper that went over the, the bottom of this car actually, underneath. There's a control, the, the track trip, that goes underneath it for the track. It's all wrapped up together and they separated it with the, with the wood screws and the uh, tissue paper and the top was just covered up with the instructions and the inspector certificate. What a beautiful car. Let me give you another look at that. Awesome. I'll go ahead and wrap this back up and we'll go on to the next car. Okay, we've got two more cars to go on this brand new set that we have. So let's take a look at this one. This is our 631 gondola car. Our original blue and yellow box. We'll just open that really gently. We don't want to rip any of the cardboard on these. And once again, this is a full wrap in our brown tissue paper. Set that there. And you can see how tight this one is. So if you look at that right here, we're gonna to try to unwrap this as gently as we can. There's a little bit of white. I don't know if that's glue or just mildew from age, but they would wrap it up. They would do a fold over. And then we'll just finish unwrapping this one. And we'll take a look. Here's our 631 Texas and Pacific gondola. I'm gonna pull this out and just give you a quick look. So the inspection certificate was inside. This was another nice car that both the trucks could come underneath. So it was easier to, um, to pack and secure. Brand new 631 Texas and Pacific gondola. Let's put it back. Um, <laughs> the, uh, August 14th, 1950 is the inspection certificate on this one. So this goes right in here. This goes back here. And we're going to put that right back in its box. Okay, so our last car, appropriately, I'm assuming, is our caboose. It is a nice tight fit in here. So let's see what we got. 630 caboose, and we'll open her up. Once again, nice box, wrapped up in this brown original paper. Very tight wrap. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and just see what we have in here after all these years. Open this up. There's our rating. So look how we did this one. So if you look in here, this one on one side has the cardboard tube. And what that does is one wheel can't spin all the way around because it has the wires hooked up to it that pick up off the bottom. And that's what gives us a light. And so if you flip this wheel around, that's what picks up the track off the other side. And uh, that's what lights our caboose. Isn't that beautiful? So 
anyways, this one, uh, the, the date is March. Let me see, I can't quite make it out, but it's uh, something 28th, 1950. And that's how it would have come on Christmas morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this back up and we'll wrap up the opening unboxing of this original American Flyer set. So that concludes our uh, unboxing of this brand new set from 1950. So this is our original picture. I've done it a little bit different in here, but this is how I found it. So uh, I'm gonna leave this picture. It's a Polaroid, by the way, so you know it was open quite a while ago. Uh, you can get these at Walmart these days, but uh, it's a pretty old picture when this was opened. So we'll just leave it right there. And I'm gonna take this piece of paper, put it back on there. And we are gonna close it up. There we go. I hope you enjoyed that unboxing of this brand new set. Now for a little history on the 5009. After World War II, the AC Gilbert Company uh, experimented with something they called electronic propulsion, which was essentially just a DC transformer. Uh, the locomotives uh, traditionally had the four-step forward neutral, reverse neutral uh, configuration, and the DC power allowed the locomotives to basically change directions with the flip of a switch on the transformer. So instead of calling it a transformer, they called it an electronic rectiformer. So by using uh, one of the rectiformers or a uh, number 15 rectifier hooked up to an AC transformer, you could convert uh, power onto the track into DC. And what was interesting about this was that um, the AC locomotives would work fine on uh, DC power, but the uh, DC locomotives wouldn't work on AC. This led to some interesting things in the catalogs to where it shows uh, DC sets and AC sets listed uh, basically with identical consists. So in this case, the 5004 set from this year had a 342 AC powered locomotive. And then of course the 5009 had the DC powered engine. So from the end of World War II to the 1950 at least, you had this dual power system going on so it led to them creating these double uh, sets, uh, identical sets with different power. And even though a 5004 AC set could run on an electronic rectiformer or a rectifier, the 5009 set couldn't run on an AC transformer and this led to some confusion in the future years, which ultimately led to the abandonment of any DC-powered American Flyer sets. But that's a uh, subject for a different video in a different time. So I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of this 5009 set. Um, I hope you had as much fun as I did uh, looking through these boxes and opening these brand new cars. So with that said, uh, please tune in and I'll see you next time. For more great information on American Flyer Trains and the AC Gilbert Company, check out myflyertrains.net and americanflyerdisplays.org. Thanks for watching. All of Science West. The YouTube channel that runs on safety first electronic rectiformers.